Sometimes it's good to know when to give up on an experiment. I set this tank up with plenty of fertilizer, including soil-based fertilizer, osmocote root tabs, liquid fertilizer, and compost. And I set it on a 12 hour photo period and it only grew cyanobacteria after a couple of weeks and someone suggested add a cap full of ammonia for three or four days once a day for three or four days and increase the photo period to 24-7 and after two or three weeks the water should turn green. Well I did all that and it's been several weeks now. I believe the problem is the cyanobacteria, the green hair algae, the flat spot algae, all these organisms are soaking up the light and the nutrients and cy uh, phytoplankton which are the single-celled free-floating algae that make green water green don't have a chance to get established in the tank algae give off spores and that's the way it's able to travel from one body of water to another and here inside there may not be any spores of phytoplankton so I believe it's time to break this down and during warmer months when I can culture green water outside I'll have a starter and then perhaps I'll have some green water available to start up a tank and I can propagate green water indoors during the cold season next winter. There are 15 one gallon jars on this stand next to this window and I culture Daphnia magna in most of them. One I just reserved for potting soil and plants. Another I'm just putting used aquarium water and some compost to try to culture some green water or infusoria to feed the daphnia. During the warmer months it's fairly easy to culture green water outdoors and I can add the green water to these daphnia cultures and sometimes they crash for one reason or another occasionally they get infested with hydra which will consume the daphnia so I just have to trash such a culture other times they soil for some unknown reason and I just have to start over at least one or two cultures always seem to make it through This culture on the corner probably has the most Daphnia at this point. Through the winter I'm unable to offer them green water right now. But whatever infusoria or other microbes populate this gallon jar, the Daphnia find enough sustenance to make it through the cold months. In this Daphnia culture I also have some black worms and I only feed these black worms brown paper since the water is stagnant and there's no type of filtration if I feed them anything else the culture will quickly soil and I'll have to dispose of it if they subsist on brown paper alone they can go a long time without a water change once in a great while 
I have to empty the culture and strain the filth out of the brown paper which includes the black worms. I'm currently culturing black worms in a five gallon bucket with brown paper and an air stone and I keep a lid over them but incidentally some Daphnia Magna got into the black worm culture and even though it's usually dark inside the five gallon bucket the Daphnia are consuming whatever microbes are growing in the black worm culture so this is another backup I have plenty of Daphnia Magna to make it through the winter when I'm unable to culture green water outdoors it's not absolutely necessary to have green water including phytoplankton to culture Daphnia Magna but that is the best way I'm attempting to give my Colombian tetra a treat of black worms. I haven't noticed them in the net as of yet. They are catching them as they escape from the net before they hit the substrate where they'll burrow into the gravel and may stay hidden. They should be able to survive at this temperature, but it's not ideal for them. They prefer cooler water. This is in the middle of the safety range. Ah, I see the Columbian Tetra have begun to notice the black worms coming out of the net, so... few of the braver ones are taking them right off the net. See, there's also a Daphnia Magna in that net. If it swims out of the net, the Columbian Tetra should devour it immediately. Oh, he got the Daphnia. That's one of the bravest ones. Went right in for a worm.